the keys are to the glory days at the stick. From who's got it better than us to brick by brick. It's always the 49ers way from off season to game day. Yeah, we talk back. It's the 49ers cut back. It's 49ers Cutback Podcast time. Welcome to the show. It's all about protectors because we're going to be breaking down offensive linemen and especially tackles. Now, some of these guys could potentially move inside, but we're looking at them as outside you know, opportunities, um, guys who play on the outside that could potentially protect Trey Lance. And who knows what the 49ers would decide to do with them because we all know 49ers do draft offensive tackles and move them inside because of their versatility they've only drafted one interior guy so far aaron banks everybody else has been an offensive tackle so you mean to tell me that there's a specific type of tackle prospect that the faithful that the tcc that 49ers fans should just be looking at it is that what you're saying that's definitely what i'm saying whenever you're in a zone responsibility and zone scheme you're looking for big athletic guys who can move and you find a lot of those guys that have played the tackle position in college. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Look, and we know Mr. Corey and, and a couple of the other guys in chat are, are shouting, if it's not Trevor Penning, I don't want to hear about it. And unfortunately for you, man, he's a top 10, 15 prospect in this draft class. Uh, unless the Niners are moving heaven and earth to get up for a guy like Trevor Penning. It's just, it's not going to happen. It's not going to be Trevor Penning. No. There, there I, do, are, I do love Trevor Penning. There, there's very few absolutes in this world. <laughs> Trevor Penning is one of them? Trevor Penning not going to the 49ers is one, yeah. <laughs> Look, there's a lot of things to like about him, but unfortunately, uh, it would be sort of a, not a waste to talk about him, but it's just not realistic. And right. It wouldn't be being fair. wouldn't be being fair to the situation and, and to the cutback crew to talk about someone like Trevor Penning because he is going to be not just going early, but he's one of the better tackle prospects in this draft. One of the top four. In fact, in fact, across every every site, every place, uh, Trevor Penning is not someone who falls past about 15 in any single mock draft either that I've ever seen. Uh, so look, let's start with someone that's a little bit more realistic that's going to be going towards the second round, even though he's still going to be technically out of range. And he's still out of range in most mock drafts and most scenarios for the San Francisco 49ers. That would be Tyler Smith. Out of Tulsa, talk about a guy who does have flexibility, potentiality, and moving on the inside. This is a guy that you and I both really, really like. Yeah. What do you like most about him? Uh, I like his athletic ability. I like that he's able to get after it, and uh, he's very versatile and flexible in his hips. He's able to move well. His kick slide is nice and smooth. He's got good hands. Uh, I, that's why I think he's going to be out of the range of the 49ers, because I think this guy is a really, really bang-up prospect. I think you could slide him in uh, behind Mike McGlinchey, and then next year he just takes over as your right tackle with, I believe, left ta left tackle potential. Um, so he could eventually take over for Trent Williams. That's how good he is once Trent was ready to move on or ready to retire. Uh, this is one of those guys that's just a can't-miss prospect, as far as in my opinion. I really like him a lot. Uh, good at getting to the second-level blocks. He's very physical. Um, he, he doesn't let his feet stop on contact. One of my favorite watches for sure. If I was if I was actually thinking he was a potential prospect for the 49ers, he would be a star player for me. Uh, but he, I don't think he's an actual guy because I think he's going to go in the first round. And right now, the 49ers are not going to be able to reach into that first round for an offensive tackle. So I don't see that potential, but a really, really, really good player and really fun to watch. Extremely fun to watch, really yeah. good potential. The question I have for you, Ant, is actually this. If he fell into the second round, if he got to day two, even just the start of day two and one of the first two picks, are you enticed enough to want to move up to get a guy like this? I would be. I, I would definitely be enticed to do it because right away he could come in and play offensive guard for you, and then he could slide out to right tackle the year if you, if you decide Mike McGlinchey's not going to be there after his fifth-year option is completed. So, yeah, he's somebody that I would definitely be interested in going up and getting. I just don't see any scenario where he falls anywhere you know, between 33 and 40. I just don't see that. Sure. Um, and I think the closer you get to 40, the more of an opportunity the Niners would have to go get him. We don't know what their trade uh, market's going to look like, uh, how they're going to be able to potentially move Jimmy Garoppolo. We don't know that for sure. Uh, but right now, they would have to use a lot to go up into that area. He would be somebody that's worth that target. Now, I do like some of the guys we're going to talk about that are probably going to be in the 50 to 70 range. So where the 49ers pick. But, yeah, he's a, he's a really nice prospect. So that would be a trade potential move uh, they could make. There's some guys that are like that. If they fall, you have ed a few edge rushers still that if they fall into that area, you have the offensive linemen, of course, only a couple guys. And then, of course, like a Christian Watson, who's a dynamic receiver. Those would be trade-up potential players. Look, I, I agree with you on a lot of what you just said. 
Um, this is a guy who gets mocked sometimes into the second. He's a guy that's kind of a, some people consider fringe first round, even though I don't I don't see why, because there are very few guys that show the the power at the point of attack that this guy has. The way he's able to move, dominate yeah. physically, explode off the line of scrimmage and control dudes is absolutely incredible. Um, hard to imagine him falling into the second hit, but if he wants to and teams don't want to take the chance because they want to make that run at wide receiver, they want to make a run at tight end. I'm seeing, I'm hearing and starting to see a lot of rumors that this this Charlie Kirk, uh, or Christian Kirk, excuse me, not Charlie Kirk, Christian Kirk um, contract with the Jacksonville Jaguars has really thrown the market for a loop. And teams are a little panicky about paying wide receivers right now. And some teams are even considering and maybe replacing wide receiver production with pass catching tight end production to get a little cheaper at certain positions and, and save value. So if that were to end up happening in the draft and teams were to go run at wide receiver, maybe run on some tight ends, a couple tight ends earlier than people anticipate, then maybe a talent like this slips. But then I think teams are crazy if you're doing something like this, because if you're if you're going that route to fill needs and fill holes, then you're leaving potentially one of the better talents on the, on the draft board out there for someone to snag late. Yeah, when it comes down to it, it's still an impact on a quarterback, right? The first thing you want to do is make sure you have a quarterback. Then after that, Fair. you either want to have somebody that can get after the quarterback or somebody that can protect the quarterback. So on the pecking order, it's still going to be ahead of the wide receiver. And I understand what you're saying because there is a run on wide receivers right now and they're paying wide receivers so much money. At some point, though, with the amount of players that are playing wide receiver at a high level, the market is going to get flooded. Um, so when that happens, then there'll be a little bit less you know, of that money going allocated to these wide receivers. But right now the market has been flipped up on his head. Um, thanks a lot, Jacksonville. You really screwed the pooch for everyone else. Literally ruined it. Ant. Yeah. Literally ruined Soiled it. it. So who is the first name that you're looking at at tackle prospects? They're going to be available closer to that 40, 50 range um, that you think makes sense for the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, Bernard Raymond, uh, six foot seven, 305 pounds from central Michigan. Fun watch. Um, I thought he had a good, not great kick slide. So it was good, but there's a little hitch in his giddy up. Um, so when he's going, it's not as smooth as some of the other guys that I walk. Um, he can anchor, but he could add some more weight. At six foot seven, being only 305 pounds, I love his athletic ability and what he's able to do with that size. The problem is, we all know 305 pounds ain't going to get it done being able to anchor against NFL edge rushers. So he could have some problem there. Um, he's he's a good run blocker so i thought he wasn't a great good run blocker right now but good he gets after it very good first step gets off the ball very quickly and then he did well against ebiketti at the senior bowl um so with a speed rusher ebiketti of course not the ideal length you want for an edge rusher but when he did try to straight arm and single arm uh raymond raymond was able to anchor down and hold he does play lower with his pad level than somebody that's six foot seven so i like that um some of the things that I saw, though, on film was he's a little susceptible to the speed rush. Uh, so when he would get into his kick slide, that hitch in his giddy up, he wouldn't be able to get all the way there. Sometimes they would be able to dip the corner on him. And then there are moments where he plays tall and he actually looks like he's six foot seven. And I think those are the, the hangups. But overall, a very good tackle prospect. I think he could come in and play left tackle, even though translating to right tackle immediately would be something that would be beneficial for him and I believe whatever team he ends up going to. Uh, listen, I, I like this pick a lot. I like this guy a yeah. lot. Um, <clears throat> this is a guy that I had highlighted as a guy to watch just kind of where he goes. I feel he's probably mid-second round talent that if he fell down there towards 61, you're looking at a very solid prospect. The Niners would get a steal at that spot. Um, he's raw. He's extremely athletic as well. I do see some flexibility concerns that you were talking about and, and the bend uh, long as well. Uh, I think he has a solid foundation though already as someone who's new to football. This is yeah. a guy who hasn't been playing football very long in the league, or excuse me, in, in college. He hasn't right. been playing football a lot. So this is a guy who's new, yet has a solid foundation for which to build upon, and there's a lot of building that can be done here. Um, inconsistent technique, what you talked about getting tall, is what I saw on film as well at times. I do think at times that slow first punch kind of rears his ugly head, especially on speed rushers, and it doesn't always fire out, it doesn't always make contact, and when he's not making that contact, eh, there can be some problems. But outside of that, I, I like a lot of what I saw out of him. And he also played in a system that was very Kyle Shanahan friendly in a right. heavy outside zone type scheme. I even saw a couple places literally say, this is an ideal Kyle Shanahan type tackle. Um, I do like this selection. I do like this possibility here with uh, with Raymond. I think this could translate very well to San Francisco. The problem is, is I don't know if he falls to 61. And I don't know how much you want to come up. Uh, to, to in the 50 range for a guy like this, especially if there's a talented edge rusher or a talented receiver sitting there at the same sort of spot. You have Mike McGlinchey. We've seen something out of Mike McGlinchey. We know he's more than just serviceable. He's one of the best run blockers in, in all of football, especially when healthy and, and available for the 49ers. Um, 
I don't know if necessarily this is a fix, but this could be a long-term replacement option if he became available there. And the further he starts to slide towards 61, the more I like that pick. Yeah, especially because we just saw what they did with Aaron Banks, right? Potentially, Actually. Lakin Tomlinson is going, was going to leave. He did, in fact, leave. And now you have Banks, who played left guard at Notre Dame, able to slide in and take over that role. Um, hopefully, he's developed you know, the way that everyone anticipates. This could be the same sort of thing. They know they got Mike McGlinchey in the last year of his contract. They may not be willing or able to pay a right tackle the amount of money that Mike McGlinchey is going to be afforded. So you might have to move on, even though it's going to be tough. Uh, this might be where you strike on his eventual replacement, somebody that can't impact the team in 2022, but can potentially impact the team in 2023 and beyond. Uh, so we'll we'll see if they strike by the iron's hot and go ahead and get one of these players if they're available. Uh, very true, Ed. Very true. Uh, what about Abraham Lucas out of Washington State? That's the next guy that's kind of in that area. What, what are you thinking about him? Do you like him at all? Yeah, Abraham Lucas, six foot six, three hundred fifteen pounds out of Washington State. So he played in a very pass happy offense there. Um, I thought he was very fluid. I, I thought everything looked very smooth, very controlled. He's very strong. I liked his physicality there. He had good balance. I never felt like he was getting overextended. Those are things I liked he's, about him. He's not much. He's not on the ground much. When you watch his yeah. film, he doesn't end up on the ground, which is nice to see in a very pass happy offense. This is a guy stumbling over himself. You, you hope you never see an offensive lineman <laughs> on the ground. Um, he can handle speed. And the bull rush. There so there, he, he's he's good at both, which I like. So he's able to not only handle the speed, but the anchor. Some of the problems I have with him, his initial punch can be slow. So his initial initial strike is not there all the way. Um, and he can lose to the inside move. He does catch himself going up field too far, and then the inside move will get him. Um, and it's all because of the weight shift. Uh, so that is one thing. When he's going here, shifting his weight back is the issue. I, I thought that was the major concerns with him. But overall, I thought he was a very good prospect and definitely worthy of somebody you could take at 61. I see a lot of potential as him at right tackle in the NFL. Uh, agreed. A right tackle seems like the spot. I think he has enough enough in the tank that if you needed him to swing over and play some left tackle, you could. I just don't think that's his most ideal role and situation there. I did agree with the punch. How did you feel about his power at the point of attack? Because it didn't. he didn't seem to overwhelm at all. But I don't think there was like any concerns there because that's something I've seen that people have put like a big con on because they didn't see him dominating people and just levying people like we see like out of a Tyler Smith sort of thing. Um, you know, oh, maybe he can't maybe he doesn't have the necessary fit to be a, it, it, to be a run blocking threat or option uh, for teams and run schemes. No, I think he can. And, and first off, it, he's got to speed up his punch. If he speeds up his punch, he'll get a little bit more movement there. But he's. 315 on a six foot six frame he can put on another five to ten pounds of muscle and add on to that strength as well and get after it so uh no i'm not really worried about that and i think some of that's what he's asked to do at washington state once again scheme fit where he's more occupying a blocker than actually dominating a blocker uh so i'm not concerned about that if we're talking about a more straight ahead running style you know a more get after it you know one-on-one -on -one, uh he maybe he wouldn't be a fit for his own scheme though like kyle shanahan he's a fit uh, there you go. I mean, yeah. I, I listen, I like that a lot. I like everything that you just had to say there. Um, and usually the next guy on list at this point, and is a guy in Daniel Falele that we are not going to discuss because this isn't a fit. Yeah, he this didn't guy, make my list. This guy doesn't make the list in terms of options for the 49ers. And I know there's some people who are still very high on this in 49ers land. Not here. It's not, it's not going to be happening here. You're not going to get that from us. Um, what about Nicholas Petit Ferrer out of uh, Ohio State? Yeah, Nicholas Petit Ferrer, uh, pretty good player, six foot five, three hundred and sixteen pounds. You're seeing a little bit of the right, the the normal size, right? It's usually six five to six seven, you know, three ten, three fifteen for these tackles. Now they have to be very uh, athletic to be able to play the current styles that are being asked of them to play in college, and then now in the NFL. I thought he was a good run blocker. I really liked that yep. about him, and a good athlete. Um, the things that I questioned about him was his weight distribution. Uh, on his kick slide. I thought that was a real issue for him. Is sometimes he would catch himself going one way or the other, but this is an Outland uh, Trophy finalist. Like This guy is one of the best tackles in the NFL. Uh, he played left tackle for Ohio State. He's very good. Um, I, I think that he would be a nice selection. I think he could be somebody that's there, maybe not even just 61, but potentially 93, 93. which would be a nice selection because I think him playing left tackle in college, he could translate to right tackle in the NFL. We know that transition takes time but he's taking reps at both sides. So I think he's somebody potentially the Niners could target if they're looking for a tackle. I also do believe he's one guy that could slide inside. This is one of the first guys that we've sure. talked about that could slide <clears throat> inside and play guard. I think his measurables and size, speed, uh, able to get to the second level, that's something he could do. Hands also, extremely active hands. Yeah. This is not someone who doesn't have a, a fast punch or anything like that. And um, The big thing for me was the footwork. 
uh, just consistency with the footwork. Sometimes his feet aren't necessarily right, and uh, it leads to him not being <laughs> on balance or in positions to, to make the type of blocks that you're seeing. But uh, Petit Freire is, is a phenomenal talent. I mean, like you talked about, being an Outland finalist, one of the best, you know, offensive linemen in all of college football. He has the impressive measurables, and he's not, you know, he, he doesn't play so high and have other issues where you think maybe it doesn't translate over. I know he played specifically on the left side. I, there were a couple times where he slid over to the right and maybe had some issues transitioning everything over because it is a little bit of a flip when you translate from left to right. But if you're working on it, if you know that's the flip that you're making, if you're then working and honing on those things in training camp, working and honing on those things in the offseason, working and honing on those things in practice rather than focusing on one side of the line like you did most of the time at Ohio State and then having to flip over mid-game or something like that, you're not going to have those same types of problems and concerns. I think this guy is a, a dynamic talent. Uh, and I, I I didn't really think about him moving on to the interior, but the, the more you mention it and the more you say it, possibility. I like that. I do like yeah. that there out of uh, Petit Freer out of Ohio State. Yeah, definitely. I think the first, you know, the first year especially, he could go inside to play next to Mike McGlinchey if, uh, you know, if, if that's what you needed. I do believe Daniel Brunskill is going to be that guy playing guard. Um, but this guy, I think, is a better guard prospect than, say, like Jalen Moore. So people have been slotting in Moore potentially as the right guard because they don't like Daniel Brunskill. I think this guy would actually be a better guard than Brunskill. I mean, than uh, Jalen Moore. So um, something to keep an eye on if the 49ers were turning to a, a tackle option. This would be one that could play interior until he slid out the next year uh, and played right tackle in place of Mike McGlinchey. Fair enough, Ant. Fair enough. What about Matt Willetsko out of North Dakota? Yeah, this guy's a fun watch. Uh, six foot seven, three hundred and twelve pounds. Shocking, right? That that's the size. What do I you do... mean to tell? Hold on. Do you mean to tell me that the, the TCC and the rest of the faithful right now for the rest of this episode could probably guess the measurables for most of these guys? It, it's pretty close. There are a couple guys that are going to come up that are going to shock you on their size. Fair. Um, I thought this guy was really smooth. Um, able to get to the second level very quickly. Um, length allows him to stop speed rushers. I thought that was something that I really like. He, he did it very consistently. And the reason is he has an 86 inch wingspan. Uh, that is impressive. It's kind of uh, impressive. Yeah, it is. So he's able to kind of close off on guys and get his, get his hands on people um, that normally a wide nine or a edge speed rusher wouldn't think that a tackle could get to them. He does. Um, so those were things that were really nice about him. I liked him especially in the pass blocking. I thought he had an aggressive first step, was able to wall off second-level defenders. That's something I watched uh, consistently on film. Um, but I thought he needed to add a little bit of weight to his frame. I thought sometimes he looked a little slight. 6'7", 3'12", he could definitely put on 10 to 15 pounds. Um, uh, 10 pounds, I think, would be the nice amount for him. And then he throws people too often. Uh, so what he does with he speed does. rushers is he likes to get them upfield and then throw them by. The problem with NFL, NFL players is, uh, they are strong enough to not only not be thrown by, but to then bend the corner and get to the quarterback. Uh, so that's something he's going to have to fix. That is also a penning problem. Uh, so the so that is something that if the 49ers did draft him, they would have to work on him with. I know you want to take that person's speed and throw him upfield, but that won't work all the time in the NFL. Those guys can bend the corner and get to the quarterback. It's true. Um, it, that's what I had on here. Um, with hands, sometimes he won't latch on to guys so much as Punch, not grab, there and then go. if he gets a little bit into a position where he doesn't have the control he wanted to have, starts getting a little, not wobbly, but wanting to take their momentum right and try and use it against them, it works at the level that he played at with how big he is and, and some of the size that he's going against. And that, that'll work. That'll work against the level of competition. That necessarily won't work at the NFL level where these guys are working on contact balance and being able to pass rush and get around and bend said edge, right? Dip, lower that shoulder, rip, get by a guy and show very right. little of the body or at least show enough of the body that if you start pushing and using his momentum against him, okay, that's fine. You can use my momentum against me, but you're using it against me towards your quarterback. Uh, that's not really yeah. against me. That's actually in favor of me. Thank you so much. Yeah, and if you start throwing your hands like that and getting off balance, they're going to uh, be able to withstand that push and then come back inside. Uh, use yeah. that hand, put it on your back and push you through and then come through. Uh, so these guys are, that's the thing. It's a different level. Um, but I mean, his length is going to allow him to cut a lot of people off, which is something you want, because then if you can put a little bit of size on him, he's able to anchor down a little bit better than he already does. You have a very, very solid pass uh, blocking tackle in this league. It's true. Um, yeah. it, very, very, very accurate. Um, look, Darian Kennard, next guy that kind of comes up on the list, a guy you're not as much of a fan of. And, yeah. and I understand TCC has been 
very big on this guy. There's a lot of people actually very big on Darian Kennard. Um, I, I think there's some interesting things with him. I think there's some things that people like. I think what they see a lot out of Darian Kennard that makes them fall in love with this kind of prospect is the fact that they've seen a lot of finishes, a lot of him at times of him trying to finish blocks off, getting on top of guys, lo laying guys out. I've seen an entire highlight film of Darian Kennard finishes, which is which is great. But I have concerns and questions about hand placement. I have concerns and questions about his first strike. And I have concerns and questions questions about him literally turning and opening up and leaving inside run lanes. So opening up to the outside and leaving inside run lanes, completely flipping his hips, opening his body and giving a straight line shot to inside pass rushers on inside moves. I'm talking full open. I don't think I've seen it out of a lot of prospects that are supposed to be going in the top three rounds of a guy who will straight up, just straight open up thinking he's got a guy mirrored. I, I've done a great job of keeping this guy in front of me all game. And he does it one time and gets toasted on it. Um, there are some concerns with with Darian Kennard with where he would be going. Is there any spot where you feel really comfortable with a Darian Kennard for the Niners to take this, or is this not an option for you? Oh, uh, I think if he was playing offensive guard, if he's moving inside, Fair. I see him similar to Aaron Banks was last year. I think that they're very similar. The problem is, is Aaron Banks had superior hand placement. He used his hands a lot. There are times you watch Kennard and he will throw a shoulder. Uh, even when he's making combo blocks or in a double team, he just throws a shoulder and then runs by. Like, what is this? You don't do this. And not even, <laughs> this isn't even acceptable in high school. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know why his coach isn't absolutely ripping him a new one uh, because that is just poor technique. Uh, the, I did have a positive. He's a very physical run blocker. So Absolutely. the things that you talked about, he gets after. That's why I think moving him inside the guard would make a lot of sense. I've also argued he would fit a lot of other systems in the NFL where he could more, be a dominant more, offensive tackle. More power runs. Yeah. Um, but he struggles with speed. So if you're, if a speed rusher gets on the outside of him, he's going to struggle. So if you're looking for this guy to replace Mike McGlinchey, um, yeah, he's going to have similar issues. So you got that. Um, and then, yeah, of course, my big thing was he uses the shoulders and not his hands. Uh, that was something that I saw right away. And I'm like, come on, you always have to use your hands when you're blocking as an offensive lineman. Uh, you got to get on these guys. You got to latch onto them. You got to move your hips and get your body between them and the hole. So, yeah, he wasn't my favorite prospect to watch for sure. I like this size, six foot five, 322 pounds. I thought that was nice. Measurables. Yeah, uh, but I think he's. I, I think he does translate better to a, an offensive guard in this type of system. So if you see him go to a Kyle Shanahan or similar system, he's going to be a guard in this league. There it is. There it is, TCC. I, maybe so if I'm he's, wrong. If he's yeah, in San Francisco, he's a guard, that's what not I a tackle prospect. We'll see what happens. I, and listen, I, I don't disagree with you there. I actually thought if, you, if the Niners are taking a shot at, at a guy like this and drafting him, that he probably has to slide inside because I didn't I didn't love what I saw to him and at the tackle spot I do I love I understand the runs the run stuff he, he seems like he would be a great fit in the run game I don't, I'm not so sure about the pass game yeah I mean he's very aggressive like, yes that's great he's a bull um, but the improper hand placement and improper technique uh, second level blocks somebody that you know these linebackers the 49ers Shutter have a shoulder and a linebacker well yeah these 49er linebackers would just shed the block and move on they're gonna go right around him. Uh, so I, that is something to watch sometimes is, is is the technique is important for some parts, especially an offensive line. You're not wrong there. And who's the next guy that you're looking at on this list of, of actual legitimate, le legitimate 49er prospects at the tackle position? I like or... Braxton Jones. So he was okay. brought up to us in the, the chat. I ended up going and watching him. Um, I really liked him out of Southern Utah. And I remember there was the, the, the rhyme that went with it. Right. Um, Oh God, I'm blanking on the something about right now. smooth in the second level. It was, it was a pretty good one. It was solid. Yeah, but he's six foot five, three hundred and ten pounds. A very very nice size for that height weight ratio. He was smooth. I mean, real smooth. I mean, the, the guy is the, who, the guy who told us in chat was not lying. He's smooth. Um, good athlete can make second level blocks. That's what I really liked about him. Here's the negatives: his leg drive. So when he's trying to get people off their spot, it's not very physical with the run game. I thought that was an issue. Um, and that's and then also the punching power. Uh, there wasn't a lot of power behind his punch. I thought he did get his hands up onto people, but there wasn't a lot of movement there. So he's a guy that needs to improve strength. But I saw a guy that could be an elite pass um, blocker in the league. Uh, just needs to work on a few technique things. But the smoothness of his kick slide and all that is a very good player, good athlete. Um, so, yeah, I liked him a lot. I thought he had a good balance. I thought he shadowed yeah. well when I was going back and watching film after that. Uh, I, I think the thing I, I liked the most was the, the lateral movement out of him and how he was able to get back and forth and keep guys in front of him. Um, but that's always one of the concerns now when you start getting away from top end talent is power at point of attack, right? Yeah. That, that initial punch, that initial contact, being able to you know stagger guys, get them off their spot, uh, move guys yourself. Um, 
that that starts to get a concern. You either have one of two things at this point, right? They're either very good with some of the fluidity movement and footwork and technique stuff at this point, or they're really powerful but lack something else, like lack some of the the foundational pieces that make you feel like, hey, this guy can do this consistently, snap in and snap out. That's what we're starting to get with some of these guys. Um, but Braxton Jones is a solid one, and uh, the gentleman in chat who left the the nice comment on him wasn't wrong. He is a smooth operator. That is that is one thing that is for sure. Smooth operator. I mean, he okay. he really he really <laughs> truly is. And you're you're not wrong. He yeah. is a hundred percent a smooth operator uh, at this point in time. Um, look, Zach Tom is the next guy that's on my list. At a, at a Wake Forest. I do love a lot of the things this guy does. And talk about a technician, talk about a guy who is fundamentally sound, top to bottom, can do a lot of different things, has moved around a lot of different spots. Um, very good lateral movement as well out of Zach Tom. I liked a lot of the things that I saw out of him on film. Um, this is a guy who's been showing time and time again now over the course of basically this entire pre-workout season, this this draft season, combine season, pro day season, that he has flexibility and there's nothing the San Francisco 49ers love more than flexibility. Extremely coordinated ant um, moves laterally very, very well. I, I did enjoy <clears throat> his his hand technique at times. I think he puts some his his hands in good spots. I think he's got a, a very solid quick punch. I don't know if he necessarily has the power though. And I do concern if he's playing on the outside about being able to anchor down against bull rushers. But outside of that, I do like this guy a lot. Yeah, and if you're going to have one of the two things, either quick or heavy hands, I'd rather have quick hands because you get your hands on the guy quicker, you get control of the chest play. That's important. Um, so I did like that. Uh, he's a great athlete. Not a good athlete, but a really great athlete. Very fluid. I like the way he moved. Everything seemed clean. Um, he gets under defenders. That 6'4 size allows him to play underneath a lot of these defenders as they rise and, and get taller. And I wrote down he had good hand placement as well. I thought that was something that he did very good. Uh, I liked his hands. And then he wins on the second level. Uh, yeah. So anytime you have to play for the 49ers, you need to be able to win on the second level. I thought he was somebody that did that. The questions I had for him is I felt like at 6'4", 304, he could put on a little bit more size. I don't think there's a lot of size that could be put on there, but there is some. And then I have the same concern as you, anchoring at times. I felt like sometimes he could get straight arm, single arm, and get pushed back into the quarterback. That is something he needs to work on. But overall, this is guy is a, a really, really good third-round prospect. Uh, so you're getting this guy in the third round, mm -hmm. he can definitely come in and help your football team. So, yeah, I liked him. I thought he was a, a very bang-up uh, draft pick. Uh, solid there, my yeah. guy. Absolutely solid. Who's next on your list? Who you got? Well, I'm going to break down a guy, Joshua Azidu, uh, 6'4", uh, okay. 308 pounds from North Carolina. Um, I thought that he was a good athlete, a uh, zone scheme fit, so he fits what we're doing. 100%. Um, and then he's powerful. The, the, those those were things I saw on film. At 6'4", 308, it's very close to what you just uh, talked about with Zach Tom. Uh, very, you know, same size. The difference is... Tom is a better athlete, is more physical, has better hand placement. And then where uh, Tom played under people, Azidu plays tall. Uh, at six foot four, I was kind of shocked that he played as tall as he did. And then he also stops his feet on contact. Um, so that was something. But that's something you're going to see now as we get <clears throat> farther and farther within this offensive line. Um, most of these players do stop their feet on contact. And that's something they need to consistently work. Uh, but that is something that you have to train your body to do. And that's really hard. But I thought he was a good prospect. Seen him do be very successful in a lot of very good run games for North Carolina over the last couple of years. Um, so we know he can handle that. But my questions are really in the past game. Uh, look, I, I, here's the other thing, too, I will say about this gentleman here. Um, I've watched some film, not a lot of film. But here's what I do know about him. This is an academic standout, Ant. This is a guy who's got a high IQ, understands the game at a very yeah. high level. And that is evident of the fact that he has 120 combined starts at left tackle, left guard, and right tackle. Mm -hmm. So this is a guy who has flowed all over in the North Carolina system, has played a lot of different spots and a lot of different snaps there, which means flexibility and versatility. And the San Francisco 49ers love themselves a guy who's smart, can pick up schemes and concepts very quickly, has size. Right. This guy does at the you know, 320 mark. And with, with, you, with, you have him at 320? That's what I'm seeing. I have 308. 308? I see, I've seen as high as 320 on him. Wow. So if he's 320... At what is he six five six four six four, maybe he can lose a little bit. Maybe maybe he'll lose a little bit. Well, I mean, Do you think I, this guy trans would translate better at guard than tackle. I think he is a better guard prospect. Okay. I did not have size <laughs> concerns with him, so he definitely plays like somebody that is you know potentially three hundred and twenty pounds. But 
when the measurables came out, it said 308. There it is. Um, so, I mean, theoretically, with somebody six foot four, you'd want him to be 315. Ideally. Uh, but there you Ideally. go. Um, that might be the difference between, if he is 320, that's the difference between him being a good athlete and a great athlete. I also wonder the difference. I wonder also if he's gotten himself down to be able to do some of the things combine wise where he needs to be. And then teams will be like, well, you need to put on 10. You need to put on whatever. I wonder if he's dropped some. Some way to help him perform a little bit. Yeah, it could be. I mean, you, yeah, it, it, either way, I think he's a good prospect, but he's a better guard prospect for sure. Uh, there it is. There it is, TCC. Yeah. Uh, there it is indeed. Uh, who's next on your list, and Who's the next guy that you're looking at and being like, you know what? I, I like this here. Is it, is it Dare Rosenthal out of Kentucky? Is that the guy you want to no, talk I'm about? No, I'm going to go with Rasheed Walker from Penn State. There we go. Um, six foot five, 313 pounds. Uh, good athlete. Strong punch. So we've had some of these guys. We haven't talked about the punch being strong, but Rashid Walker has a strong punch. Uh, he gets to the second level. He's a guy that can get there, which I like. And the anchor's good. Uh, so for some of these guys, we've had the struggles with the anchoring. He doesn't have that problem. And then my my struggles with him, though, was his balance. He's not always balanced. Sometimes he gets out of his framework and gets unbalanced. And then he does overdo the punch at times. So even though he has a very strong punch, there are times when he punches and he lunges and he gets himself off balance. That could be an issue for him in the long run. So I thought he was a good prospect, but this is a guy now we're starting to get farther down. I think this guy would be a late four, early five prospect. I don't know how he's ranked with other mock, you know, mocks and all that stuff and how everyone has him ranked. That's where I see him, though. And I think he's a right tackle to guard prospect. I do not see this guy as a left tackle in the NFL. Uh, fair enough. Uh, fair enough. Myron Cunningham is another guy here out of Arkansas that's kind of on lists and things. Uh, look, I, I think the thing I like the most about him is the athleticism. The athleticism shows up on tape as well as the agility. Um, I think he'd have incredible success running gap scheme. So this is a guy who could slot in. He played tackle, uh, specifically left tackle at uh, at Arkansas, but I think he could play guard and his ability to pull, get up in the hole, find guys, make blocks is great. However, bad first punch, okay? Not consistent controlling defenders. So when he does engage, doesn't necessarily get them going where he wants to go. So I have concerns about power point of attack and also just about getting his hips around the space, that hip mobility and agility. Um, the other thing is technique issues, hand, feet, placement, things like that in base sets. When he's on the move, you send that guy up to second level, I don't have as much concerns about him getting there. He finds ways to get around guys, get up in space, get up to his defender. The problem is, is once he's there, I don't necessarily see the control and the power at that. Now, is it there? He's got he's got some of the size. He's got some of the measurables that you need. However, he hasn't consistently shown it on tape. This would definitely be a guy, if you're taking late, that you're hoping to develop. He needs some time in order to get there. That's why he's going kind of in that fifth to seventh range. Some places even say undrafted free agent. I could see that a possibility, that option there with a guy like this out of, uh, out of Arkansas. Yeah, I see him as an undrafted free agent. Fair. I thought there was a lot of holes in his game and things that he needed to work on. I didn't do an in-depth breakdown because, to me, he didn't seem like somebody the 49ers would target early and somebody that I didn't think could beat out a Justin Skule or a Colton McKivitz uh, right, as one of these there. guys on the line. So. Um, he was somebody that I watched for a little bit, and then I kind of just you know started moving on and trending towards other guys because there's just so many prospects. You can't spend time on everyone, um, but I think that he could be a developmental piece that somebody brings in, sees what he can do in training camp, and then potentially stashes him on the practice squad um, and allows this guy to continue to develop. Uh, I d don't disagree with you there, yeah. man. I see all of the concerns that you just mentioned as well as the ones that I realized. Uh, who's next on your list? Uh, Dare Rosen... Rosenthal, okay. uh, six foot seven, three hundred and is that twenty seven pounds? I think so. Uh, from Kentucky, <laughs> I can't read dude. my own writing he's there. He's big, man. He's, yeah, a big he's dude. really he's he's massive. Um, and then he's a very athletic. Uh, he's a good pass blocker and very and can anchor. And that was something I always watched. Was can these guys anchor? Because when you're going against edge rushers in college, a lot of times you don't always have to anchor. So the guys who can do it consistently are going to have a better chance of doing it in the NFL. The guys who struggle in college are probably going to really struggle in the NFL. Um, but because he can anchor, you know what that means? He's probably going to have problems with speed rushers, and he does. He has problems with speed rushers. <laughs> um, that's why he's down the list of where he's at. Uh, and then he he lacks a, the aggressiveness at times. I felt like sometimes he just didn't get after it. I want a little bit of you know that bully mentality coming from my offensive line, and I felt like sometimes he didn't have that. But with the six foot seven, three hundred and twenty seven uh, pound measurables, you're excited about that size and potentially what you could do as a right tackle prospect. Uh, but there definitely is this guy would be definitely middle of the middle of the road, fifth, sixth round for me. Uh, so Colton McKivis, Justin Skewell range is where you're getting him, and you're getting a different type of player than those guys. Um, but maybe closer to Colton McKivitz without the bully mentality. Fair. Uh, I have impressive strength on here. Uh, yeah. The ability to be able to handle that anchor, I, I thought it was extremely impressive. I thought for his size, he played with decent pad level. 
I really did. He does. Yeah, I, that's, I, that's, I, that's true. I didn't look at him and think, God, man, this guy looks six seven. He plays like he's six seven. He's stupidly, ridiculously tall. He needs to get that butt down in space. Like, get down, young man. Get that center of gravity in a better spot. No, I was like, oh man, that's that's pretty good for six seven three twenty seven. So that's I'm gonna write that down. That's nice. That's that's really good. And the athleticism shows. His athleticism yeah. shows on film. It's the first thing I wrote down. Extremely athletic. It pops on film, which you love to see. But there are concerns a lot in a lot of other places, and especially against speed edge rushers. I have some poor technique stuff, some fundamental issues, especially with footwork at times. Um, I wrote on here project. He is a hundred percent a project. If you're drafting this guy thinking, hey, we can slot you in and win some football. No, you're not slotting this guy in to win football games. Um, but I think his upside is high, especially with where he's going in drafts. I've seen him mocked as low as undrafted free agent and so someone not even wanting to take a chance or a flyer on all the athleticism, the size and the measurables that we said, I think that would be a mistake. And I think if the Niners could take a guy like this, if they're going to hold on to their draft picks, fifth, sixth, right, seventh, you're, if we're starting to hold on to those late round picks, this is a guy I would be targeting uh, in, in those ranges. Yeah, definitely. Compensatory picks in the sixth round would be a, a nice spot for this guy. It's, it's funny that we both mentioned his great athleticism, yet he struggles with speed rushers. Um, you would think that would translate. Well, it's because right? it doesn't translate in his kick slide. Correct. That, that's why. Yeah. Correct. But it, it's just it's just funny. You hear extreme athleticism. It's like, oh man, this guy can handle the speed. But they can't handle extreme athleticism off no. the edge. There no, you no. go. He hasn't <laughs> translated his extreme athleticism into stopping extreme athleticism. Yeah. This hasn't happened yet. Uh, what about Max Mitchell? Max Mitchell's a guy we've heard a lot of out of Louisiana. What are you feeling about Mr. Mitchell? Oh, he's a star player for me. There it is. Max Mitchell, six foot six, three hundred and seven pounds out of Louisiana. Um, excellent run blocker. Not like a good run, an excellent run blocker. I like that a lot. Able to pass off defenders. So when he's working in the run game, when he's working in the pass game, either way, he's able to pass off defenders, but especially in the run, which is nice. Uh, he's a good athlete and he has a lot of versatility. This is a guy I thought could play throughout the offensive line, could play either side at tackle, which I loved. Um, my problem with him is anchoring. I didn't know if he was going to be able to anchor consistently. When you're 6'6", 307, you're giving up some size. Somebody that needs to put on 8 to 10 pounds. And if he did, then I think he would have that necessary power to anchor. The same sort of problems you see with Mike McGlinchey at this size exactly. When he played at this size in 2020, he couldn't anchor in the NFL but I see a lot of the McGlinchey type traits getting to the second level, finishing blocks. He doesn't stop his feet on contact. Um, so I liked him a lot. And that's why he got a star player for me. I'm kind of surprised he's as low on a lot of boards as he is because he was like one of the only guys who got a star that we've talked about today. Dude, I had a third round grade on him. Oh, easy, easy, easy yeah. third round grade. And he is at the back end, almost 200 in some people's like, right. And I have an easy third round grade. It's not even close. It's, it's not third to fifth. There's no sliding scale. It just says this is a this is a third round pick type of player in the, in this draft with the talent that we know early in this. He's easily in the third line, round. Plays with great pad level against pass rushers. Uh, explosive off the ball. Extremely high motor. Talk about a guy who doesn't just finish and wants to finish. Oh yeah. He wants to finish. He wants to get up to second level. He wants to hit that linebacker in the mouth. Put him on his back. He wants this more than anything. The big concern I had was inconsistent technique sometimes versus pass. I thought he could let also, especially bull rush, can let defenders get inside yeah. of him and control him and push him back. Those were my biggest knocks. That was it. Outside of that, there was nothing to dislike about this guy on film, and I can't figure out why he's so low because this is a third-round prospect. And if you're telling me in the fifth round, sixth round, we could sit on one of these picks. We can sit on some. We don't need to trade some of these compensatory picks to come up to get a, a talent like this. We could just wait for a guy like this to fall in your lap. I like that a lot. Yeah, I do. I do too. I think this guy with the versatility that he would have to play throughout the offensive line, he could actually come in and compete in one of the guard spots early. Oh yeah. Um, and then translate to your right tackle once Mike McGlinchey, you know, potentially moved on. Uh, so I liked him a lot. And that's, I mean, I didn't hand out stars easy. I, you know, I'm an offensive line guy. So when I wasn't going to hand, hand it out early. When you hand easy. out a star, when you yeah. hand out a star it, at the offensive line posi position, especially it means something. Yeah, and this guy's good. I liked him a lot. Like he's it's one of my favorite films to watch for sure. There you go. Uh speaking of that, let's just move on over to Kellen Dyche, a guy that we've talked uh, about a light, guy that we think has some versatility and some flexibility and to play potentially inside and outside. Uh Nega Glinchy, as I have down here. Yeah. On on my literal thing here. This is Mike McGlinchy's alternate ego, right? His alt ego. A guy who is absolutely incredible versus the pass and struggles in run blocking situations. Uh, what are you thinking about Mr. Dyche? I like him in pass blocking situations. I think he's very smooth. Uh, he has very good hand placement. He's one of those guys that plays long. I mean, he looks good. The problem with him is on the run game. I oh, mean, there, yeah. there's 
Um, there's not a lot of force behind what he does. You know, the punch isn't there. Slow he first strike. He doesn't move people off, you know, off their spot. Um, he, he's athletic enough to get to the second level. Like, all the things that you would like athleticism-wise are there. The problem is they're just not the power. He's not going to be able to move an NFL defender off their spot right now. Uh, so that's why he's definitely a developmental piece. But if you're looking to upgrade, and this is something they did with Jalen Moore last year. Jalen Moore was a, a very talented pass um, blocker that needed to improve in the run game. That's what Kellen Dyche is. So if you're looking at him and thinking he could develop the run game as potentially one of the better pass blockers uh, from the offensive tackle spot, maybe you bring him in and develop him and he takes a Justin Skules role um, or somebody like that if you're ready to move on from one of those other guys. Uh, but this isn't a prototypical 49er selection at the offensive tackle spot. Uh, no, this would be the opposite of a prototypical uh, tackle selection for the 49ers. This would be going a, a much different route. Uh, I do like a lot of what he does on film. I think he would fit in the scheme. I think he could could do some things, but he just doesn't have necessarily the skill set to translate very well into the scheme. So while I, I like where he is down here, I don't know. I don't know because if, if you're giving me a choice between a guy like this or a guy like Max Mitchell, I'm taking Max Mitchell most days out of the week. I'm taking Max Mitchell every single day and twice on Sunday. Twice on Sunday. Um, yeah, Ma Max Mitchell Ooh. to me is a far superior prospect because he's a more complete prospect. Uh, you are correct there. He is yeah. definitely a more complete prospect. Who's next on your list, Ant? Who's next on your list um, that you're looking at going? I have a couple other guys that I broke down, but I'm going to go to Spencer Bur uh, Burford. Absolutely. Um, six foot four, 304 pounds at a UTSA. Um, there, he's been brought up a lot in chat. Like people have talked about him a lot. And because of the UTSA has a few players uh, that have NFL caliber uh, ability, they have gotten more attention. And I like some of the things about him, especially where he's going to go in the draft. Potentially this guy is a compensatory pick in the sixth round, seventh round pick or undrafted. Like that's kind of where he's at. Uh, he's a great athlete. I like that about him. Good second level blocker. He gets after it. Like this guy plays with that aggressiveness, that physicality that you see um, from McGlinchey and some of the other 49ers offensive linemen. And then he has good technique. It's not great. It's good. There could be some development there. I'd love to see Chris Forster get his hands on him and be able to mold him. Uh, and then his issue is not the anchoring, but the speed rush. The speed rush gets after him. So that is something that you see from a lot of these guys. They either struggle with speed or they struggle with anchoring. I think he could add a little bit of size, but it's not a lot because he's a six foot four guy. So he's able to play low with the lower pad level. And he's also another guy I saw as a transitional uh, potential guard in the NFL where the Niners could draft him as an offensive tackle because of his size and measurable slide him into guard. And I think he could actually make a really nice home there. I think you. I think you're right here on this. Um, I think he's not as high as some people have put him. He's also not as low as some people have put him. Yeah. He's kind of right in the middle between the two. Um, I I, I do concern about the being being able to anchor down sort of things. I have I have issues there and and times where I'm not convinced about it. But look, at the end of the day, I think this guy's an extremely high IQ ant. I think he's got versatility. This the guy who was a four year starter at UTSA. He knows how to play. He knows how to play with good pad level. I like a lot of his fundamental technique stuff. I think this would definitely be a prospect and a project sort of player, but with where you're going to be able to get him, this doesn't feel like a risk for me. This isn't a high risk, uh, high risk, low reward scenario. In fact, it, see, it would be closer to low risk, high reward than anything else. Yeah, and what I like about him is you could draft him and potentially stash him on the practice squad. Uh, I think it's that true. you know he's a guy that would make it to the practice squad and you could develop. So I, do I think he would make this 53 man roster? I'm not. I'm not so sure. Like I think it would be tough. Uh, but when you're drafting that position, if you still have that draft capital available, you want to take a player you could potentially develop into something, but also that you know is developmental enough to make it to your practice squad. And I think this is one of those guys. Fair enough. I don't disagree with you there on that. And uh, who's another gentleman that you're looking at? Chris Paul, six foot three, 323 nah, pounds from Tulsa. Tulsa. And the reason that I went there is because I think this is an offensive guard prospect that is disguised as an offensive tackle uh, in college. And the 6'3", 323, uh, 6'3", definitely screams interior offensive line to me. Uh, very strong. Like, not like kind of strong, very strong. Plays low in anchor. So that's something he does because he's 6'3". Uh, he gets to the second level. He's able to get there. Doesn't always finish, but he gets there. Uh, my problems with him is he's raw in the footwork department. That's why he doesn't translate to being an offensive tackle in the NFL. Um, I think that he has str he struggles with latching on. So there are times that he allows his hands to get deflected, uh, get his hands moved off. Defensive linemen are able to get wrist control. Uh, so he's going to have to continue to work on that, which means moving him inside where he doesn't have so much space between him and the defender is a good thing. Um, and then he's, he's just, you know, his hands aren't strong enough for control yet. So he needs to work on that. But I think that 
there are some development there that could happen. He's definitely a, a project player, uh, but where he's going to go in the draft, potentially you draft him and develop him into a guard in the future. I think he's somebody the Niners could be interested in because that's 6'3", 323, but the way he moves at that size is very enticing. Uh, you're you're not wrong there. I, I That was one of my biggest concerns was sufficient power. Sufficient power. I didn't feel like this was a guy who dominated. It's not that guy who exploded on film in terms of finishing guys off or putting guys where he wanted to put them. Um, but I, I liked a lot of the other things about him. I like a lot of the, the possibilities there, and, and you mostly see him at tackle in college, which means, okay, well, he's – Sort of playing in an, in an awkward spot at Tulsa where he's 6'3", doesn't necessarily have the length that you'd like to see, doesn't have necessarily the footwork you'd like to see at that spot. But if you move him inside, a lot of those concerns just kind of vanish into thin air because you're not asked to do the same type of things. Um, and he does. He does have anchor ability. I, I do like that a lot. Um, his strength is very functional. It's functional strength. It's a, He's able to get the job done and do what he needs to do and get guys where he needs to get them without necessarily wowing or it being the most impressive thing in the world. And I know everyone loves the big blocks and the big finishes. Everyone loves himself a pancake ant. Who doesn't love pancakes? Some people are waffle people, which are basically pancakes on a griddle. What about the French toast people? Okay, well, I mean, those people are they're just being weird. They're, they're just being weird. You have to add something. Wow. You have to add something extra to it. Wow, it's French toast is delicious. It is delicious, especially with cinnamon on it. Wow, I've ne I've never been so like against your opinion than I ever have than right now. I went against uh, what I typically and I feel don't on French do toast. I apologize. Cinnamon on French toast either. Well, that was mostly for Megan because that's what she needs cinnamon on French toast. But it's it, that's beside the point because that's not. It says, my a, it, it says a lot. It says a lot. My apologies, <laughs> my guy. I'm not looking forward to the wedding now and, and everything else that's going on. But look, I, I do like that prospect there a lot. What about Luka Decky? Luka Decky is a guy who's kind of been the tweener, right? There's yeah. people that say, hey, he's going to be a tackle. Hey, hey, he's a guard prospect. There's some sites that list him as a tackle. There's some sites that list him at a, as a guard. Um, what do you think about Kadecki? Yeah, he was a guy that I broke down in the interior offensive line uh, sure. video because I really did believe that he's a guard prospect in the NFL. I liked his, you know, his skill level, the things he was able to do with his hands. He's a pretty smooth operator. Um, but I felt that at tackle, he could get outmatched by some of the more supreme talent he was going to see on the edge. Or if you slide him, slide him inside, he's going to be able to play with the low pad level that he consistently play with. Uh, so I think that that is somewhere where he needs to be. I think having you know less uh, space for him to operate in is good for him because overall athleticism and stuff, he's going to struggle with speed rushers off the edge. Um, so I like him moving better inside, but I understand that people are still seeing him as a right tackle prospect because he's one of those guys that's very smart, very cerebral, um, and is always trying to do the right things. Even though the technique isn't always on point, it's pretty good. Correct. Um, look, I, I think it, no matter how you break this down with, with Gadecki, this is a talented prospect. If you want him at tackle, I think he has limitations. I think he'd slide in better at the guard position uh, as well. He's solid in the run, has good hand placement. So we'll see what ends up happening with a guy like Luke Gadecki. We'll see where he ends up uh, being. But uh, again, yeah, Ant, another guy out of, out, of, out of the same school there. There's a lot of guys coming out of that school this year um, that are doing some things in this draft and showing some flashes. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see where some of these guys end up. Um, which of these tackle, tackle prospects is a guy that the Niners potentially end up targeting? Yeah. As much as some people may not believe tackle is, a, is an area of concern, if you're not a big fan of Mike McGlinchey, then maybe something needs to be done at the tackle position. And we want to hear from you, Cutback Crew, so let us know down in the comment section below right now which of the guys we just talked about you're absolutely in love with the Niners need to go after, or did we miss them completely and not talk about them at all? And we need to do another video talking about this guy, maybe even in the Gems video. Leave a comment down below right now and let us know. Yeah, and if we miss someone, uh, I'm, I'm, I'll am i be surprised. <laughs> uh, we, we There's a lot of names. We definitely went through a, a lot of guys in this draft, and potentially just because the 49ers draft an offensive tackle True. does not mean they expect that offensive tackle to take over for Mike McGlinchey in the future. It know. could also be that they see him as an interior offensive line prospect, um, not even just guard, but potentially center. Uh, that's what they do. They draft offensive tackles, and then they use them however they deem uh necessary to get the best sort of production they can get out of their offensive line so it's all about flexibility and versatility with the 49ers and there has been a little bit of a shift you know since chris forster took over uh john benton had a particular style there now he's with the new york jets and now you see the way that chris forster's doing i mean chris forster takes over his offensive line uh coach and they draft an offensive guard let's see if that trend continues will they approach it and draft an interior offensive lineman or will they stick to what they were doing before offensive tackles with versatility to play inside possible all over this possible cutback crew we cannot wait to discuss this more with you in the comment section down below so make sure you're commenting away make sure you subscribe if you haven't already like the video hit that notification bell as well that way you don't miss any additional videos that are coming out they don't miss any more war rooms and they don't miss any of the new content that we're going to be putting out and they don't miss updates on the draft party which is april 29th 
at Back Alley Brew in Galt from 4 to 8 p.m. You're going to want to be there if you're in the NorCal area. Make sure you put that on your calendar right now. Write it down. Don't forget it, and we'll see you then. Yeah, it's going to be an absolute blast. I'm looking forward to the draft party. I'm looking forward to seeing what the 49ers do and then celebrating with all the cutback crew and everyone that's going to be there. Um, the outpouring has been good, so it's going to be a nice crowd there, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Absolutely. Man, TCC, what an episode. Some great tackle prospects. A lot of names for you to digest. So go digest them. Go watch the film and let us know if we missed any. And until the next one, stay safe. Remember the right way is, is always the 49ers, 49ers way. You stuck around all the way to this point. Well, I, I hope, I hope by this point you've at least liked and subscribed if you haven't already. And there's some, some cards over there, Ant, too, with some other high quality videos they can check out. Yeah, click one of the click one of the links and watch one of the videos. It's gonna be great. We'll see you there.